Hi YouTube, this is 133 MHz and today I will show you CRT rejuvenation on the cheap. Uh, this is a technique I have been doing for, for the last time, uh, a couple of times before, with very good results and with very simple materials. Uh, as you may already know, CRTs tend to wear out with use over the years because the cathode surface either, either gets contaminated, gets shorted out by dendrites or imperfections during the manufacturing process or simply the the rich electron, the rich uh, emissive electron material gets worn out and when that happens the picture quality decreases considerably uh, the white balance goes off or you know the, the contrast decreases uh, overall brightness lowers or you get a, a streaking effect on, on bright bright images and etc. So what you can do is you can usually apply a rejuvenation technique on a, on a worn out CRT to try to get a, a little bit uh, more life out of it you know, to restore restore some of the, the good emission back and for these they're usually uh, very expensive and specialized equipment for, for restoring uh, cathode ray tubes but uh, unless you unless you do this for a living, uh, getting one, uh, such a such an equipment is usually out of financial reach. But if you have a you know an old CRT that it's worn out and you're not afraid to lose it, you don't have nothing to lose. Uh, you can try a more economical rejuvenation technique, which is just blasting some current through the cathodes to try to blast off any short or or impurity and you might get very good results. I have done this in the past, as I said, with very good results, but uh, I strongly advise against it if you have a, an, a, an antique or valuable CRT. In that case, I would, I would uh, suggest to use a, a proper CRT restoration machine. But if you have a quite modern TV that, you know, to save it from the scrap heap, uh, try it out the, the, the cheap method might be good enough and well this is the first time I recorded I have done it in the past but I haven't you know registered any of my results which have been very good so I'm going to try it with this uh, old uh, 6 inch color TV set it's a nice portable I just picked it up recently as you can see it runs on 12 and 24 volts it has video inputs the paint is a bit worn off which I'm going maybe to I maybe strip the paint and repaint it but I'm going to use this as a guinea pig to try my cheap CRT restoration so let's have a look even though the picture is reasonably good uh, there there are some symptoms of a, of a worn out CRT which are not immediately visible because it, it still has a, an acceptable white balance it, it's a little bit to the red side but it, it still manages to give out a white picture and well the, the brightness and contrast are pretty much acceptable too but there's almost no green in the picture the the on-screen display menus which should be well this are red but this should be green is almost black so apparently the green cathode is not working properly it might be worn out so, well, as you see, the number 11 there should be green. I think it should be green. It's almost black. And it doesn't look too bad on regular television material, but when you plug in a, a you know, computer graphics like an old video game console, you know, the, the failures you know, will just stand out greatly, as you'll see in a moment. Well, here I am running the Super NES test program, and as you can see, the blue back, the blue background is not even showing. So computer graphics really make the really make a worn out CRT stand out. Unlike regular television, you may well there's the this is a tint, so the color saturation, contrast, and brightness, which are about 80, 90 percent all the way. And well, here's the <coughs> we'll run the color test which has test patterns I'm interested in the color ones for example these 
should be a completely white screen, which it is kind of white, a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit red tinted. But we have white, and then we should have a solid red screen, a green screen, and a blue screen that tests all of the all of the color cathodes. Here's the red screen. As you can see, it is red, but the green screen is kind of blue. Actually, there's not much green to it. It's really it's it's a lot darker in real life than the camera shows. The camera is a bit compensating, but as you can see that is definitely not green well not the strong green that you expect from the green cathode and yeah the blue is also a little, a little bit dim compared to the to the red one so I think we have two worn out cathodes the green and the blue one but ah and yeah here's the here's the uh, usual color color bar test pattern this should be green and as you can see it's almost black this is definitely incorrect if you compare it to the real test pattern but yes so I will show you now a, 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 a cheap technique you can use to roll out the color amplifiers because you might have a color amplifier problem instead of a, a worn out CRT and well if you, roll a, if you roll out the color amplifiers and you know it's the CRT I will show you how to rejuvenate it using uh, a few simple components you may have laying around your electronic parts box. Here I have the set taken apart and I will show you how to make a quick test of the color cathodes. Well, um, what, you, what you're going to do to test the cathodes is you're going to ground each cathode through a 10k 1 watt resistor to ground and that should display a full strong screen of the of the color that you're grounding so if I ground the, the red cathode I should get a strong red screen with retrace lines and you should do that for a short period of time to to make sure that the cathode is working properly so you do that to each of the color cathodes I'll be using this jumper wire with the, the 10k resistor so I'll clip this in here, this uh, grounded heat sink, and I'll, I'll be going like touching the red one, should be a red screen, touching the green one, should give a green screen, and the blue one, should give a full blue screen, and that should show you if the cathodes are working properly. If they are all working properly, your problem is on the color amplifier, which is here on the CRT board, but if you if you get a dim screen of on any of these on any of the color cathodes, then you have a worn out CRT problem. Any kind of picture will work for this purpose. So I'll be back here and I'll be touching each of the cathodes with the resistor. I'll be going with the red one first. There you got a strong red screen. So we have a good red cathode. We'll do the blue one next. There you go, strong blue screen, so we, we can see the blue cathode is good. And we'll do the green one now. Nothing happens. Barely something happens, so yeah, there's definitely something bad with the green cathode. And other thing you can do to, to test, to rule out the color amplifiers, is to lift the final resistor from you know the the, the suspect cathode uh, like in this case the green one and a good cathode like the red one uh, lift up the final resistor and using jumper wires interchanging the connections so using the red amplifier to drive the green cathode and using the green amplifier to drive the red cathode and that should that should help you decide if the if the color amplifier is bad so if it is bad the, the problem will switch color but if the CRT is worn out, the, the same color will have the, the problem regardless of the amplifier used. For this procedure, you will need very simple materials you can find on your electronic parts box or you can buy for very cheap, which is the idea of this restoration technique. First, you'll need a power transformer with a 6 volt winding, or 6.3 volt winding, actually to power the filament inside the CRT and to heat it up and you know do the same thing uh, the, the TV does heat up the filament for the emission of electrons this is an 
uh, power transformer I picked up from my junk parts box, nothing special. Um, ideally you should have a variable power supply so you can bump up the filament voltage a little if you, if you need a, a stronger rejuvenation. <clears throat> but in this case I'm using a straight 6 volt power transformer which is what I have in hand. You'll also need um, this uh, 10 or 15 watt 220 volt standard incandescent light. This is just a standard light bulb. Uh, of 15 watts and 220 volts. This will be used as a current limiter for the rejuvenation process and also as a visual indicator. You'll also need a bunch of jumper wires to connect everything together. You know, from the transformer to the light bulb and the CRT, etc. And you'll also need a 220 volts AC power source, like you get here in Chile or most parts of Europe. If you are in the you know, United States or any other 110 volt country, you'll need a step up transformer or you'll need to find a 220 volt uh, outlet in your house since you need uh, this high voltage for the rejuvenation technique. I'll explain, I'll explain briefly how this works. We'll basically be powering the filament as, as the TV will do, we'll get the filament hot and we'll pass a current through this through the cathode and the G1 grid on the CRT will be passing full uh, line voltage from the wall but with this lamp in series to limit the current and that blast of current should clean up the cathode surface and blow out any shorts that may have developed or in the case of a worn cathode surface or a poisoned cathode surface it should clean it and give us a little more life after the CRT. Uh, it, it's variable. You can get it. Uh, you you never know how much how much more life are you gonna get if the CRT is just lightly worn. You may get a lot of life out of it, but if it's really old, it might not last any much longer. But it should give you an improvement on picture quality. Here's how it's all connected. It's all wired up, ready for the restoration. I'll explain. The filament transformer is already plugged in and it is powering the filament through the jumper wires. It's a bit hard to see on this too, but the filament is actually glowing. Uh, it might not be possible to see, but I can see the filament is glowing, so you gotta have it glowing for at least 60 seconds before the procedure. Then you hook up the suspect cathode. Uh, I'll start with the red one, I'll do the three cathodes, just in case. Uh, for that you use the the circuit board of the CRT as a reference. You can see the all the pins are printed, so I just follow them and hooked up everything. And, well, you hook up the suspect cathode. It's in series with the AC line. It's on this plug. And then you hook the G1 or grid 1 uh, connection to the other side in series with the light bulb and with the AC line. So basically you have a current flowing through the light bulb which goes from cathode into G1 and then back to the mains. That's, that's how you do it. So what we should see when we plug, when we plug the, the light bulb with the cathode and all the thing in, what we should see is the light bulb flickering because of the, all the current that's passing through and well in this case it will be very hard to see because of this small exposed neck area of the CRT but sometimes you can see sparks inside the, the CRT neck and that's, that's actually the blasting process uh, well once you see the light bulb stop flickering uh, you can unplug it you should never leave it on too long you have to monitor it so I'll be, I will be doing the red cathode now. I'll show you here the light bulb. Keep your attention on the light bulb. That's some strong flickering. Okay, I think that should be enough. Okay, we'll do the blue cathode now. See the flickering and it's getting steady. Yeah. I think that's that's about it. Now I have switched to the green cathode 
which is the worst one. We'll see what happens when I plug this in. Pretty much nothing. <laughs> the green cathode seems to be really bad, so it doesn't do anything when I plug it in. One thing you can do, you can try to tap lightly the CRT neck with a screwdriver or another tool in order to help the rejuvenation process but in this case it's not doing much of anything there's no current flowing through the green cathode nothing's really happening I'll try a more drastic approach which is to disconnect the filament supply in the middle of the restoration which should give us a violent stripping of the cathode I'll try that now no filaments mmm still nothing I have dialed up the voltage now to see if we can get any response out of it so I got another transformer to step up the filament voltage now you can kinda see it glowing there so we'll see what happens fingers crossed pretty much nothing okay we'll step up even further now we have almost 9 volts running through that cathode and... come on it's really glowing now and it's not doing much of anything nope, not even cold emission is working well, that's Murphy's Law for you. Uh, the first time I decide to record it, and it's the first time it fails. So yeah, the, um, there's simply no more emissive material on the green gun. It's all worn out, so there's nothing much to do there, other than a CRT replacement. And in this case, it's, n it's not economical. I'm not going to find a 6-inch color CRT. So that means the TV is scrap, but you can see there is a definite improvement, you know, by doing the blue gun. Now we have blue on the background of the Super NES test menu, which we didn't have before. So you can see the improvement there. It will never have green again, but it did improve the other cathodes, which did have some life left in them. I'll go again into the color tests. We do have a white raster now, it is, it is uh, much wider than it was before. Uh, here's the red one, it's a lot brighter too. Still no green, that's kind of blue and flickery. And yeah, the blue is a lot brighter now, so... There's the color bar pattern, looks a lot better, but no green we will never have green again but yeah that's about it so that's how I do my CRT rejuvenation on the chip using simple components this time I wasn't entirely successful but at least I had something to show you it did produce a visible improvement but yeah unfortunately you know live and learn Maybe in the future I'll do another one and I'll record it again and if it's successful I'll show it to you. But yeah, that's about it for right now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.